Now, if you've ever been afraid to use watercolor, paint, anything like that in your bullet journal, this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you how to get around that. Hello beautiful what's up welcome back to the channel my name is Caitlin if you are new here this video is in part to blame oh my god that sounds really <laughs> in part inspired by that sounds way better by Christy who is a subscriber and commented down below on my March plan with me video now if you've ever been afraid to use watercolor paint anything like that in your bullet journal this is the video for you I'm gonna show you how to get around that Today I'm going to be walking you through a pride theme for the month of June and I'm really excited how everything turned out. Make sure to stay tuned to the very end and hit that like button and subscribe down below for more future videos. The first thing that I'm going to be doing is my quote page. Now I wanted to have a very similar layout to one of the posts that I did last year on my Instagram. So I came in with my watercolor paper and I just cut out the size that I needed to fit that left side of my journal. I came in with the primary colors from my Arteza watercolor set and sectioned them out separately on the page. When it came in time to mix these colors together, I made sure that I had a clean brush so I wouldn't end up with a brown color because that's what happens when you mix red, yellow, and blue together. I thought that the colors were a little oversaturated, so what I did is I just removed that excess by dabbing in a paper towel and coming back in and re-blending out the spaces. To add a bit more dimension to the page, I really watered down all of my watercolors and added in different splatters. The more water you have on your brush, the bigger the splatters are going to be and vice versa, less water, less big splatters. The quote ends up saying, I am proud to be me. And I thought that this would fit perfectly into my Pride Month theme. What I do for this quote page in particular is I just came in with my black Tombow brush pen and I went in with that nib size so I could roughly draw out the layout. When I came to a satisfied yes, this is what I like, I ended up thickening that downstroke on the word proud. And then I came in with my Archer and Olive Acrylograph paint marker in the color white. Unfortunately, mine was a little run out, so I couldn't get as bold as a pigment as I wanted to, so I came in with a whiteout pen instead. The only thing that I don't really love about this alternative is that I also wanted to do a white drop shadow on the word proud to make it stand out from that bright watercolor background. So the workaround for this that I ended up doing is I just had to come back over with my black Tombow brush pen. If you're curious about all of the supplies that I'm going to be using, all of that will be linked in the description box down below. And I have a blog post written up dedicated specifically for exactly what happens on every single page, the dimensions, all of that, the layout. If you are interested in recreating something like that, make sure just to go check it out. On the right hand side, I have my cover page. Now I wanted to keep this a little simpler because I have that bold statement piece on the left for my quote page. What I ended up doing is just created a little box and added a drop shadow here and came in with a thin cursive dainty lettering style. In the center I added in a mini calendar. This is for my mind just to keep things a little bit more organized and have as a visual reference. Otherwise what ends up happening for me is I just lose track of the days and the month and where everything is in relation to one another. The side box here I am going to be using my X-Acto knife and cutting out a Dutch door. I recommend an X-Acto knife versus scissors for a curved line that you see here because it's just a little bit easier. But if you only have scissors on hand, you can also use that as well. The underneath part here, I am creating a gradient watercolor. And I just measured out about equal sections for all of the colors that I'm going to be using to make sure that they're about equal when I'm mixing them on the page. For mixing the colors together, I try just a little bit different of a technique and I actually like this one better than I did on my quote page. So what I ended up doing was blocking out the primary colors and then I came back in with a clean brush and lots of water to mix them together. This way it just made it seamlessly go together and it wasn't as muddy as my quote page ended up looking. So if you like having the colors stand alone more, this is what I would do. Have red, 
red, yellow, and blue blobs, and then just only mix two colors together versus having some of the colors all intermingle, which happened on the quote page. Once it was done, I ended up using my crafter's tape. Oh my god, I love this. I will never go back to a glue stick, and I just put that in the journal. The behind side to my cover page is going to be a to-da list. And if you haven't seen Caitlin's Corner on YouTube, she is another bullet journaler here, and I actually got the idea from her. She had talked about basically having a page to go over what she accomplished in the month to see that, you know, I actually do stuff to be proud of. And I think my issue recently is I am go, go, go all the time, and I don't actually take time to reflect back on what I accomplished. On to my calendar. I am coming in with that same lettering that I did in Tada, just creating a messy block style and then adding a drop shadow, only a line though, on the left hand side of each letter. My washi tape, I came in here to section off the two different sides that I wanted to have a gradient effect in my journal. Now, my tip for this, if you are using things directly into your journal, you're gonna wanna use a little less water. I really love the Archer and Olive notebooks. If you want, you can also purchase one yourself for 10% off using the code CREATEWITHKATE10, and they have fabulous paper quality, 160 GSM. But if you don't wait for the paper to fully dry, which was one of my issues. I am a little bit of a rusher when it comes to wanting my watercolors to dry quickly. You will most likely peel the page off. If you use too much water, it will most likely crinkle. So be mindful that it is not watercolor paper, but it is a thicker paper, which is nice. Next, I'm coming in with my Micron pen just to add in a border on the outside. Personally for me, I like using a thicker Micron pen to get these lines because I'm going to use a smaller, skinnier one for writing in the daily tasks. This lettering style that I chose to do, I'm going to break it down kind of as easy as I can think about it. There's two components to it. So the first part is this cursive lettering style, small on the very center, part of the box because I'm going to be coming in right now and writing the numbers in the background. So what it ends up looking at the end is it has the number and the date there visible, but you can't see the entire number because it's going to be behind the word Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day it is of the week. Now on the right hand side of the page, I'm coming in with more of a business calendar. Here I'm just having a little mini calendar, which I'm going to not use words to fill in. I'm going to use different elements like icons or color-coded dots, things like that, and it's going to just provide me a visual reference to what the month is going to look like because I don't necessarily get that with my monthly calendar on the left side of the page that we just created. This calendar is going to be specifically dedicated for more of my business, things like YouTube, Instagram, and my blogs as well. Here is just a little tracker that I'm going to be keeping for my stats specifically. If that's not something that you track uh, at all, you could always have this as a different type of stat. So maybe how many books that you read, or maybe you don't track stats for anything and you could put a quote page there, or meals that I like to try, things like favorites, whatever you want to fill in that space that's gonna fit your life just a little bit better. On the outside of the bottom part of this page, I'm doing two different outlines in a gradient color. Now I am coming in with my Tombow Food No Escape brush pen to write out personal on this side, but then I'm also going to have a business on the other side. This is just where I'm going to write tasks or to-do lists, things that pop into my brain for both sides of my life. Now this section here, I want to just make it as easy as I can. And I ended up putting a whole bunch of watercolor gradients at different sizes for the rest of my journal. That way I don't have to wait for my bullet journal to dry. This avoids the problem or fear that I originally even had myself of even starting watercolor and paint in my journal. I might mess up and that could scare me a little bit and deter me from actually trying this new technique out if you've never used it in your bullet journal before. So it kind of just helps get around it a little bit. This is going to be my content calendar and I'm switching up a habit tracker format that I've used in the past before. I'm coming in with the same watercolor technique that I used before just on my calendar page and 
putting a border outline on both of these pages here. What's going to end up happening is I'm going to have the tasks that I want to get done associated with completing my goal of posting on the left hand side of the page. And then on the top part bar, where all of those different colors are, is going to be where I'm listing out all of the tasks or post ideas that I want. It's kind of like a habit tracker in the sense where maybe one side you would have the list of habits that you wanna get done if you have lots of habits for the month. And then at the top is the number of the month. So on day one, I accomplished X, Y, and Z, and I can mark it off in my journal. This is going to help me reduce the amount of times that I'm gonna to have to write this list out. And I did just end up leaving a few spaces at the bottom in case there were some tasks that I ended up missing. My business brain is what I'm calling this section here, is going to be dedicated specifically towards the three categories of my business. And instead of calling it a brain dump, because that's kind of what it's going to be a little bit, it's going to be more of a focus for my goals. I'm dividing the top half of this page into my YouTube, Instagram, and then my website. So things that I want to get accomplished for all three of those things. And I'm going to have three different goals. For me, goal setting, I really like having an easy, a medium, and a hard goal, because then when you get one done, you're more motivated to get the next one done. So if you have way too many goals, at least for me personally, I won't get them done. And for me personally, if they're all really hard, I'm not going to get them done either. This bottom part here is just going to be a list for the items that need to happen to make those goals accomplished. On the right page here, I'm coming in with a habit tracker for four different habits, basically. Things related to my business for my storefront, products, promotion, and educating myself just basically on how to run a business a bit better. And I have a love-hate relationship with habit trackers, but what I do like about this layout, and I'm kind of reframing my mind a little bit, is I don't necessarily need to fill out every single day, so it's okay if there's a blank or missed day. And then it's more of a when did I do last type of layout versus a I need to get this done every single day. So I'm kind of hoping that reframe of mind is really gonna help encourage me to use this page and keep me on track with my goals. Now, instead of doing the traditional habit tracker that I've shown you before with personal goals, what I like to do is these trackers. So I did just end up gluing in my watercolor gradient from the page that we did, adding that drop shadow and the title for the walking tracker. Here is where I'm going to be specifically writing out, well, not writing out, watercoloring in my journal, how many steps that I get in every single day. So to keep it very simple, I know it looks a little plain right now, but once it's filled in with all the colors, there will be a lot going on on this page. I had 30 days just written out, and at the bottom I'm writing out my legend. I have six different categories, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, had to think about that for a second, all the colors in the rainbow there, and each one is going to be an increment of 2,000 steps. So zero to two, three to four, five to six, I did make a mistake, and how I fixed that is I just came in and covered it up with some scrap piece of paper from the back of my book. That is one of my favorite hacks because I am prone to making mistakes in my journal, and that's how I get around it. Adding my gratitude log here on the left-hand side is also another simple looking page and a must in my bullet journal. I am switching it up a little bit this month, because I'm going to only have one line a day because I am adding a little something into my reflection tracker, which you'll just see shortly to kind of go together with my gratitude log. So I'm coming in and writing out the numbers one to 30 down the page and then the day of the week that's associated with it. So the first is on a Wednesday and then coloring in every other line with my Tombow brush pen. On the last page here for our tabbed areas is my reflection tracker. On the left hand side of this page for my March, no, my god, May, May was last month. For this section in my May tracker, I ended up doing a questions that I wanted to fill out in a separate journal. And I didn't actually really do any of those questions, so I thought 
It didn't work last month. I like the idea of having a question to answer. So let's actually write it down in my book. And what I did is I asked myself the question of what brought you joy for this month. And it kind of goes hand in hand with my gratitude log. But here I'm just gonna do things more like scrapbooking, maybe inserting stickers, stamps, pictures, writing things out. On the right hand side, I'm writing out my weeks, so week one to five, and I couldn't actually figure out how I wanted those titles to work. So I just kept it simple and left them all red to purple gradient colors from left to right. That's really where I wish that I could ask you what your opinion was and which one you liked better. So let me know down in the comments below if you liked the red to purple or a different layout. On my weeklies, I've divided into three different sections. This top section here is going to be dedicated specifically to what I'm gonna call my top tasks. And this is going to be an area where I can write down about three to four things that I must get done in the day. If I don't do anything else and I got those four tasks done, I'm gonna feel accomplished and happy and felt productive in the day. I did end up coming in with a longer watercolor gradient from that piece of paper that we cut out just to write in Monday to Sunday and then the day of the week as well in there. The one thing that I will note is I did go in with a little bit too skinny of a pen, so I used an 03 here, and what I did end up doing is coming back over it with, I think it was my 05, just to make it a little bit bolder and pop out, especially in those darker purple and blue sections. The second block here is going to be dedicated for an hourly breakdown. Now, I haven't done block scheduling in my bullet journal for a little bit, but I wanted to try it out, especially now that I'm working for myself and need really the whole day kind of organized. There's not that chunk of my day anymore that's dedicated to my traditional nine to five job. It's now my business and creating that. So I need something to stay on track. On the right bar, our third kind of section of this page, I'm inserting here just a little calendar if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I am obsessed with these little mini calendars just to show me where I am in the month. Now, underneath that mini calendar is going to be another task box, except this one's gonna be specifically dedicated towards my business goals. So going back to that business brain dump page, what do I need to accomplish in the week to make sure that I'm staying on track and getting those three goals for my categories accomplished? But that is really it to this video. If you enjoyed it and watched up until this point, make sure to drop an emoji with your favorite color in it in the comments below. My favorite color is green, so you will be seeing an emoji with a green color just down in my comment there. And that is it. I will let you enjoy the flip through.
Well, that is it. Thank you for watching so far. Make sure to smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment down below for future videos. And next week, I'm going to be walking you through how to use a grid spacing guide and the different grid spacing guides that you can use in your bullet journal. I'll see you next week. Bye!